everyone, welcome to Auto Scholar with Mr. B. I'm Mr. B. I'm a master technician and I'll be your instructor for today. So today we are getting deep into airbag systems and I'm going to use my trainer and I also have some lecture materials that I'm going to use to help you understand airbag systems better and help you get to the right diagnostic very quickly. So airbag systems are a little difficult to diagnose because we can't really come at them traditionally like we would a normal automotive problem. So uh, I do have a trainer here. This is a CASA Lab trainer that I'll be using during this lecture. And uh, I'm going to take you through the systems and show you the parts and how to diagnose each part. And then some scan tool diagnostics as well. Scan tool is going to be needed for any type of diagnostic to an airbag system. So make sure that you have a good, properly updated scan tool, bi-directional control, and also uh, you're able to see the PID data in the airbag system. So this is our Consolab trainer. It is based off of a Honda Fit 1.5 liter. It's a 2017 Honda Fit. So they basically gutted this vehicle and attached this to the trainer. So uh, if you are wanting to follow along at home with wiring diagrams or anything like that, just look up a 2017 Honda Fit and you should be able to see pretty much everything that we're seeing here on the vehicle. So airbag systems have become more complex, just like anything else in the vehicle as the years have gone by. Uh, we now have uh, inflators with multiple charges. We have seat recognition. We have a lot of different uh, things that are coming along that are making it a little bit more difficult to diagnose. And so I'm gonna take you through all those to show you what I've learned through the years of dealing with these systems. And hopefully you'll be able to put that in your toolbox and help you diagnose cars uh, quicker, faster, and more accurately. Okay, learning objectives. Airbag safety for the technician, that's gonna be our first topic here. It's very important. It's something that everybody that's watching this needs to know. Starting points for the diagnostic, this is going to be where we start. So everyone has to start somewhere, and this is where I start. So I'm gonna teach you where I start and how I do things. So visual inspection, we're going to go over visually inspecting the vehicle, and I'm going to give you some tips on going through the history of the vehicle and trying to figure out exactly why this came on without digging too deep into the car. Scan tool practices, we're going to go over the scan tool, how to use the perimeter ID data, and make sure that you're on the right track with using the scan tool. And again, any diagnostic that we do is going to require a scan tool. And then I'm going to go over one of the special tools that we use to emulate the airbag being there and show you how to use it during your diagnosis. So airbag safety, one of the most important things we'll learn today, airbag circuits cannot be diagnosed traditionally. In other words, we can't use our meter, we can't use a power probe, we can't uh, ohm things out or anything like that because of the fact that we can set off an airbag or damage the control modules. So we mostly have to use our scan tool for that. Use of multimeters may cause airbag deployment. So when we're ohming out a multimeter, say for resistance or something like that, we're actually sending power into that circuit and then counting the time it takes for it to get back. So that power can and will set off a airbag in a vehicle and can cause damage or injury. So scan tools are required for any diagnosis. You need to have a, a, a good scan tool, one with bi-directional control, one with uh, PID readouts. Uh, so it needs to be a pretty good scan tool. Uh, when in doubt, disconnect the battery and wait. So if we are replacing a part on the vehicle or a module, anything like that, um, you know, the factory does have certain ways to power down the airbag system. But if you don't know those ways, if you can't get around to finding that out, then what I do is I disconnect the battery and then I sit my foot on the brake pedal for a few seconds. And that runs down all the capacitors in the car and make sure the car is completely dead. And I just wait a few minutes, you know, maybe go take a break, maybe go to parts, maybe fill out some paperwork or something like that, and then go back to the repair. Very important to remember that any non-OEM repair leaves you and your shop open to liability. In other words, if the factory says this harness needs to be replaced and you decide to repair it and something happens to that customer in that car and the airbag does not deploy and they go back and they find out that the airbag was repaired in a non-OEM way, you can get sued and not just your shop, but you personally as a technician. So keep that in mind that when we repair these, we need to follow OEM guidelines on repairing, you know, the, the electrical system or even the component itself. Also, lastly, store removed airbags business side up. So 
Say I'm taking off an airbag from a steering wheel. Normally these steering wheel airbags will have a emblem on them, you know, Ford, Chevy, Chrysler, whatever. We need to have that emblem facing up and away from the technician. So when you take that airbag out, you put it on the bench, on the floor of the car, on the seat of the car sometimes, which I don't really recommend, but whatever. The business side or the explosion side needs to be up. That way, if you, if you set it upside down with the business side down, if that airbag happens to go off, then that airbag, the entire airbag becomes a projectile. And that can cause, you know, at best damage to the vehicle. At worst, it can cause injury uh, to the technician or even an innocent bystander. So keep that in mind, business side up. One of the absolute first things I do when I get a vehicle in with an airbag light on, that's going to be probably your number one complaint with most of these vehicles, unless you work in a body shop and then basically you're just going to be replacing components that are affected in a collision. But if you just work at a dealership or independent shop and you get a customer in and they have a complaint of an airbag on, I'm going to do an in-depth inspection of the vehicle. And not only am I going to visually and physically inspect the vehicle, I'm also going to ask for service history and maybe even pull a car fax to see if the car's ever been wrecked or the car's ever been repaired. I'm also going to keep an eye out for any aftermarket accessories that are added, such as radios or under dash lights or anything like that that may end up causing an issue with the airbag system. A lot of people will install accessories on their vehicles, not really know how to put them on, and of course cause collateral damage in other systems on the vehicle. So if you have a, uh, a passenger side dash airbag issue and you see an aftermarket radio, I'm not saying go into the dash and dig in there and look and see, but just keep that in mind that, that maybe in the installation of that radio, something may have happened with the wiring going to that airbag, and that could be the whole root of the issue. Also, collision damage, pinched wiring. I've even seen a purse underneath the seat rip the wiring out of the seat and cause an airbag light to come on for a seatbelt buckle code. So uh, always take the environmental concerns into where this vehicle came from and take that into account when you're doing any inspection or trying to find the root problem of the airbag light. Diagnostic steps, okay? So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to, with any repair that we do on any car ever, is we're gonna confirm the customer complaint, okay? That is the first thing we do. So if the customer is complaining about the airbag light on, you know, you can do this in the service lane. Turn the car on, wait for the light check to go out, and is the airbag light on? If it's not, you need to find out what the customer's talking about or the service advisor is talking about with the airbag, okay? Sometimes customers will have scan tools. They will delete the code that's in the airbag. It may be an intermittent issue and the code's not back yet. You cannot fix something that is not broken. So, and attempting to repair a car with no problem can get you in trouble with, uh, the laws of women laws, things like that, comeback laws, things like that. So, uh, you know, to protect yourself and to further help the customer, you know, you really have to verify the complaint. Okay. Second thing, visual inspection. Okay. I don't know how many times I found problems with airbags just by using my eyes, no scan tools, nothing crazy, just looking and seeing what's going on with the car. You know, has, has the car ever been in an accident? You know, we need to look into the history for wrecks, previous repairs, okay? So, uh, you know, you may have to pull the Carfax or look into the service history. Maybe a technician a week before replaced something on the car, and maybe that's what's causing the airbag light to come on, or maybe they took it to another shop, or maybe they did this or that, it doesn't matter. You need to find out a little bit about the history of the vehicle to guide where your first steps of the repair are, okay? So look for overspray, look for panels that don't line up, look for really shiny parts next to not shiny parts. And that's how we can tell if a car's ever been in an accident. But sometimes, you know, they're doing really good work on these cars to make them exactly like they were from the factory after an accident. So you need to pull the car facts and you need to talk to the customer and, hey, has this vehicle ever been in a wreck? Have you, you know, hit something lately? Even sometimes, you know, a five mile per hour bump can cause uh, one of the impact sensors to trigger, even if it doesn't cause the airbag to discharge. Okay, so talking to the customer is also necessary. You want to look for aftermarket equipment. Okay, so if I've got a side airbag code for the, the passenger uh, dash airbag, 
you know, does this car have an aftermarket radio? Does it have, you know, LED lights all underneath the dash? Uh, if I have a crash sensor code for the front of the vehicle, is it a truck? Does it have a, you know, maybe a brand new winch in the front or a bush pusher or new headlights or something like that? Always look for aftermarket equipment. A lot of times customers will install their own equipment and that can cause problems with the airbag system. Okay. So after you've done all that, you want to scan the entire vehicle. And I don't know how, uh, I mean, this is just such an important thing to scan the entire vehicle and check for codes and related systems. So, you know, if you have uh, a, a code in, I don't know, ABS, traction control, something like that, it can affect the airbag system or uh, any other system. So you need to scan the whole vehicle, write down all the codes before you clear them out. I know one of the big things to do for technicians now is, oh, my God, this car's got 15 codes. I'm going to clear them out, see what sticks. But sometimes, again, airbag codes may take a while to come back on. If it's an intermittent issue, so you need to write down everything in the history before you clear out the codes, and that includes the whole code, the the subcode behind it, the the writing for the code, everything. That way, you can go into your diagnostic system or your information system and look up the diagnostic tree for repairing that code. And also, we need to remember that code is not an answer; it is just a clue. Okay, so it is the smoke; it is not the fire. All right. So it will tell you what area in the vehicle to look at. It'll tell you maybe what side of the vehicle or front or rear or whatnot. But it's not telling you the problem. It's telling you the problem that is noticed. OK, so do not replace parts based on code alone. OK, look for service uh, bulletins, tech bulletins, recalls, uh, tech tips. If you work at a dealership or something like that, you always want to look into those. You can search these normally by airbag code so you can type in your code and it may be a TSB it may be something that's very easy fix or maybe the the dealer has an improved part or something to put on the vehicle so always check your tech service bulletins use shop key or identifix programs for ideas and not answers and i know that sounds funny because we find a lot of answers on these but basically i use shop key or identifix to guide me in a direction if i don't have anywhere else to go so i may scan the code find a diagnostic tree or i may look and even if 99 out of 100 repairs say this clock spring is bad or this impact sensor is bad, you still need to check the part and make sure it's bad. And you can do this a bunch of different ways. And I'm going to go through the video and kind of show you how to check all this stuff. But don't replace parts simply because the code says to replace the part. OK, we can use our scan tool data to check and confirm parts are working through uh, parameter IDs and, you know, some function tests, things like that. And also just to see if the code comes back, we can definitely, you know, after we repair the vehicle, we're going to clear the codes and then we're going to see if the code comes back. And if the code comes back, of course, we know that our repair didn't stick, but we can also do this as we're repairing the vehicle. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that as well. And this also, after you get done with all that, you've, you've singled out the part that's wrong or the wiring or something like that. You want to replace the parts and fix the wiring. And you want to do this to an OEM level. And then you want to confirm the repair and test drive through several cycles. And what this means is clear out the code, you know, set your, you know, readiness monitors for everything else. And then you want to drive the vehicle several times, two or three times uh, over distance, over different terrain, potholes, smooth road, fast, slow, turn left, turn right, back up, everything. You want to put the car through the paces to make sure that light doesn't come on. Because as soon as you don't, the customer will take this car and on the way home, that light will come on because some codes take two or three times to show up before they actually illuminate the light. So you could be on two or three drives before the light comes on. Now, a lot of our airbag codes are going to be automatic. Boom, light comes on, code is set. But on some other systems, it may not be. So always confirm the repair with a thorough test drive and you want to cycle the key on and off a few times during that test drive. Okay, so after we have done our initial visual inspection, check the history, check for any TSBs or anything that we, we may have present on this vehicle, the first uh, thing we do after that is grab our scan tool and go ahead and pull codes on the vehicle. So I'm going to just go ahead and uh, we'll just turn off this, we'll disconnect this inflator here on this airbag to set 
a airbag code. Sometimes on these codes, you need to turn the key off and back on to actually set the code. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And what you wanna do with the scan tool is you want to scan the entire vehicle. Okay, you wanna scan engine, transmission, brakes, everything, the whole vehicle, because a lot of times an airbag problem can affect another part of the system. So if, uh, say I have a bad clock spring or something, then maybe my steering angle sensor might be affected or could be a number of different things, electronic control module. It could be a lot of different things that could affect the airbag system or the airbag uh, system affecting it. So uh, as long as you have good communication, again, if your scan tool doesn't hook up, you're gonna have to diagnose the CAN bus system issue with the car. And, um, you know, that just goes into a completely different video. So we're not gonna go uh, into that right now. But uh, right now my car has communication, my airbag lights on, and I have disconnected the uh, inflator over there on that curtain airbag. So it should set a code. So let's see what kind of codes we get here. Okay, here's a shot of our Zeus scan tool. You don't need a scan tool quite this fancy. You can use you know any brand of scan tool, factory scan tools, uh, whatever you have that can interrogate the airbag system. So I would normally go through code scan and go ahead and, and scan this whole car. However, this vehicle uh, mock-up here that we have doesn't have any system but the airbag system on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and click just to read the airbag codes. And so you have two selections here. You have safety restraint system and then SWS, which is your passenger recognition system. So we're going to go into codes only here on the secondary restraint system. And open or increase resistance in the right side curtain airbag first inflator. So right side curtain airbag, that's going to be the passenger side. And it's showing that we have a code. Okay. So this is telling us about where the problem is. Okay. So, and one thing I tell my students is a code will let you, it's like, smoke in the distance okay uh, imagine you're driving down the road and you're driving past the neighborhood and you see smoke coming up from the neighborhood it's going to tell you that that neighborhood is on fire it's not going to tell you what house it is so we need to look further into here and see exactly what's going on with the car so there's a lot of other things that we can do to get to this point but i would probably if i got this code i would be looking at the connector uh where the airbag goes and go a little deeper into this. Uh, the one thing you don't wanna do with this is immediately go to your parts department and order a, inf you know, this, this airbag and put it in the car. Cause um, it, you know, this, this code can be caused by a lot more things than just a component. So again, go to your visual inspection uh, of this actual airbag inflator and look up any TSBs or recalls or tech tips that you can find on this and just start from there. Again, this is the smoke in the neighborhood, but it's not telling you what house it is. Diagnosing airbag faults with data from your scan tool is probably one of the best ways to kind of figure out exactly what's going on. It's getting closer to the root of the issue. So I'm gonna go here to data. It's gonna take a second for it to collect this data. Now, some scan tools are gonna to show more data than others, and this actually doesn't show a whole lot. But what we're seeing right here is uh, a, a listing of everything that's, that's about this airbag system. So we have, um, you know, like the left front seat buckle right here, showing that it's buckled. So if you have an airbag code for the seat belt buckle, you can, I'm gonna unbuckle it, and this should turn to unbuckle, as you see it did right there. And we'll click it back on. So this is responding properly, okay? But right here, uh, we see this on right there, okay? So basically there's a problem with this, both only side curtain airbag and seatbelt tensioner. Um, so we have a problem in that circuit. So it's not gonna tell us which one is bad because the code tells us which one is bad. So we knew it was the right, uh, the right side curtain airbag. So I'm going to actually turn that circuit back on and this is not going to change okay the reason why is the code is still set 
okay? So, and these will set codes in real time. And this is, I'm gonna show you um, exactly what I'm talking about here. Okay, so I have deleted the codes out of the system, okay? And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off one of these switches and it is going to set a code. And you see, as long as I have this up, this will monitor the system and let me know if I've got any ongoing problems. So I'm gonna slip that, that same switch. I'm gonna turn it off and it may take a second. Just selected it off, but the code should pop up. See, just right there, all right? So that's B0029-13. And it's very important if you're, you know, Googling for advice or something like that to put this whole code in because those last two digits are going to tell you kind of how the system's failed or what exactly is wrong with it. So you can have a B0029 and that 13 be a different number and it can be a completely different fault. So again, knowing all the information going forward is the best bet when you're dealing with airbag systems. So now we see that we have this problem. Now, even if I turn this back off, I'm going to pull over here and turn this back off, that code's not going to go away because it's in, it's in the memory of the airbag system, okay? So it may go off after a bunch of key cycles or if the airbag control module um, sees that there's no more problem. But for now, with it in our bay, that code is going to be there until we delete it. So part of your visual inspection on a system or a component in a system that may have a intermittent or an electrical fault is normally you grab your multimeter, you know, you're checking for resistance or voltage drop or voltage to the component, or so on and so forth. That, you know, we can't do that with an airbag system because we can possibly set off the airbag or the pretensioner or something like that. So one thing that we can do is if we have a code, we reset it and it doesn't come, it, you know, doesn't come back. I want to go to the component where this code is sitting and I want to do what I call a wiggle test. Okay. So say we are setting the uh, belt tensioner here. This is the pyrotechnic belt tensioner. We're setting that code. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear the codes out on the car. Okay. Before you clear the codes out, you definitely want to write them down or record them in some fashion, print them out. If your scan tool has a print option, and I'm just going to wiggle this whole circuit back and forth. Okay. You don't need to pull or yank hard or anything like that, but I'm just, I'm manipulating the circuit to see if I can get that code to come back. Okay. So I'm doing this while I'm watching my scan tool. I'm either watching the PID data, to see what it's saying about this inflator, or I'm watching to see if that code pops up again. If the code pops up again, or the data changes, then my problem is somewhere with a connection, okay? Now with these connectors, you'll see these airbag connectors, they're almost always yellow, okay? And a lot of times the factory is going to recommend to replace the entire harness, okay? Because this is a safety item, okay? If the factory replaces, you know, recommends replacing the entire harness, then you need to replace that entire harness because anything outside of OEM stuff may get you in trouble with a liability issue if something happens to the driver of this car while they're, you know, maybe in an accident or something that can put liability directly on you or your shop. So always fix these electrical problems with um, the proper OEM specific repair method. Okay. Let's talk about smart airbags, okay? Smart airbags uh, pretty much came out in the early to mid 2000s. Uh, it was kind of uh, just brushed into several luxury cars and now it's pretty much every car out there has smart airbags. So smart airbags are going to deploy differently on a couple of different situations that the car may find itself in. And it's gonna apply differently to the driver of the vehicle or how many occupants that we have in the vehicle, okay? And so the car needs to know how fast it's going, what type of accident this is, you know, is it a severe accident? Is it a, you know, a, a fender bender or whatnot? It also needs to know how many people are in the car because it's not going to deploy a passenger side airbag if the passenger is not in the seat, okay? Also, a lot of these bags have two charges on them and they have normally a big charge and a small charge. So it can blow one, two, or both of those charges 
uh, depending on the severity of the accident. So you have smart seats in these cars that can tell how much you weigh, how far you are sitting away from the steering wheel, so driver position in the car, okay? And uh, a lot of other things that go into making these decisions that the control module makes when it decides to deploy the airbags in a crash event. Also, we have a lot of connected systems that when this crash happens, come into play. So like with a lot of cars that I'm used to working on, if you get in an accident, the hazard lights may come on. So you may have a CAN bus signal from one of the crash sensors, go to your electronic module and go ahead and apply the uh, hazard lights and uh, unlock the doors. And if you have a GM vehicle, you may have OnStar. So OnStar, the, the module for your OnStar system has to know that the car has been wrecked. So it can call the authorities and get you help. So a lot of these systems are woven in to this smart system. And that makes the repair just a little bit more complex with these vehicles. So let me take you through and I'll show you the occupancy system in this vehicle and how it shows up on the scan tool and what we can do to properly diagnose this. Okay, this is the driver's seat here and we have a couple connections we're gonna deal with here that may set code. So one would be the seatbelt switch right here. This is gonna tell the airbag control module if the seatbelt is on or off. So you should have somewhere in your data a on off for your seatbelt. And so when you take this out, of course, the switch is going to relay back to the, AV, uh, the airbag control module that the seat belt has been undone. Um, this is going to affect the way that the airbag deploys because the airbag is designed to work with a seat belt, not in place of a seat belt. So another connection that we have here is the seat position switch. So as you change drivers, you uh, are going to report back to the airbag control module, the approximate height of the driver because of the seat position. So like me, I'm six and a half feet tall. My wife is five foot tall. So of course, when we drive the vehicle, the, the airbag is going to act differently if we were in an accident because I'm much further away from the steering wheel than my wife is. So uh, any, any problem there? And this is normally where we see problems with things getting stuck under the seat. Uh, we'll kind of tear this wiring up uh, from time to time, you know, uh, a lot of ladies put their purses under the seat or, I mean, I've seen all kinds of things, you know, cans, bottles, things roll under the seat, needs the seat. And then when the seat slides back and forth, it can get caught on this wiring. And that goes for any wiring underneath the seat. And so that's something you need to look for as well. A lot of times it's best just to remove the seat and look underneath it, inspect it, and make sure that there's, um, you know, nothing that has any physical damage to it. You also have your driver's side airbag right here. That's your airbag igniter. So a lot of times if we have problems with this, we do need to remove the um, upholstery on the seat back and that will expose this uh, airbag and we can inspect it there or do further diagnosis if we have a side airbag problem. Okay, let's go to the passenger seat because it's a little bit different. Okay, the passenger seat uh, pretty much has the same thing that the driver's side seat does, but it may have an occupancy sensor, which this one does. So let me see if I can pull this back. Might be able to see it a little bit easier. And it's right here. It's a piezoelectric. Uh, it's got a crystal in there that actually, when you apply pressure to it, it produces a voltage. And that crystal will produce the voltage and tell the seat about how heavy the person is sitting in the seat. So even if, you know, you're not supposed to put a child in the front seat of an automobile until they're a certain age or weight or height, but even if you do have a child up front, the airbag may deploy differently versus a child to a, a grown uh, person. So let me go into the PID and I'll show you how this weight sensor reports back to the airbag control module. So I have my scan tool set up for the full screen graph here. And I have a lever that I can manipulate the pressure being put on this seat. And this is just part of the trainer. But you can test this out yourself by sitting in the seat yourself. You know approximately about how much you weigh. And if, you know, I weigh about 200 pounds. So if I sit in the seat and it says that I weigh 50 pounds or if I weigh 500 pounds, I know that's way out of bounds. So 
I know there would be a problem with that sensor and that could be causing a code in your airbag as well. So I'll manipulate this. Right now it's reading about a little over a half a pound. And so as we, the graph will change. And so at full weight that I can put on this seat shows 174 pounds. And again, you just want to get in and out of the vehicle and make sure that the weight is corresponding with something that makes sense. So this is one of the cool things about this trainer. You can uh, take weight off. And also, yeah, let me move the camera up a little bit. You see right here, we have our occupancy light right here. And this is going to tell the driver if the passenger side airbag is off. Some cars have these, some cars do not but I have been seeing a lot of cars that have these. So as I put weight on this seat, you'll see this light go out. And what this is telling you is there's somebody sitting in the seat and the airbag now will uh, deploy if we're in an accident. And so on the passenger side seat, you also have the seat belt switch that tells the seat belt, you know, uh, tells the airbag module if the seat belt is buckled and we also have a position sensor for the seat which will pretty much tell the module how tall you are in case and again the module split second decides how to deploy the airbags based on all these inputs so you can have a problem with inputs and outputs i just wanted to show you some of the inputs other inputs to this system are going to be of course things along the CAN bus you know your speed sensor that will tell the the airbag module how fast you're going yaw sensor can tell you know what direction the car is moving in and uh of course your impact sensors that's going to tell the airbag module exactly where the damage is happening on the vehicle another common problem that we run into on airbag repairs is problems with the clock spring so the clock spring is a movable circuit in between the steering wheel and the steering column and this is one off of a Ford right here. And I want to show you guys exactly what this thing does here. So when you get a clock spring, you will have it in the box and it'll either come locked with a piece of tape or something like that, or it'll come with what I call the grenade pin. Okay, this is a grenade pin right here. So what you want to do is you want to, until you install this, before you install it at all, you want to make sure that the wheels are perfectly straight on your vehicle. Now, I'm not talking about putting it on the alignment machine or anything like that, but just make sure your steering wheel is straight. Make sure when you remove your steering wheel to mark the steering wheel before you remove it, that way you can put it on exactly right. Uh, but clock springs are, are very common repair items on airbag-like cars. A lot of them get damaged either by uh, the steering wheel getting out of time, more or less, uh, maybe if you replace the rack and pinion on a vehicle and the steering wheel spins around, um, it can cause this clock spring to break because it doesn't have enough wire to make the amount of turns lock to lock in the steering. So when you get one of these, it'll come with something to hold it in. And this is a grenade pin here. And we're going to pull this out. And now this can actually spin freely. Okay. So why do we call this a clock spring? Well, inside here, See if I can get this apart, I'll show you. There is a spooled up printed circuit inside this. And you can see here, it's almost like a clock spring inside of a clock. So what happens is this thing gets broken somehow on the inside and it kills all the power going to your steering wheel. Now this can also affect other parts of the steering wheel control. So if you have steering wheel controlled on maybe your radio volume or your cruise control or your horn operation or anything that's on, they're putting all kinds of stuff on steering wheels now, but if all that stuff doesn't work and you have an airbag light on, you can really expect to be replacing the clock spring or something's wrong with the clock spring circuit. You should also have a code set for the clock spring in your airbag control module. So these right here, you know, just be very careful with them. Leave your grenade pin in these while you're installing them. Some of these will have to be calibrated as well because they have the steering angle sensor inside them. This is an older one, so it doesn't. But uh, 
So you may have to do some calibration process with your scan tool after you install one of these to go ahead and get your steering angle sensor um, aligned up to the vehicle. And that will, if you don't do that, you can set a code in your ABS or traction control system as well. On the back of this trainer, kind of hidden from, from view is our airbag control module. So this is a TRW system. The TRW makes a lot of airbag control modules. But the airbag control module on most vehicles that you're going to be dealing with are going to have to be programmed to the vehicle. So you have to insert the VIN number, probably put some type of coding in that way that the airbag module knows exactly how many airbags are in the vehicle and what vehicle it's in and can respond correctly in an accident. If you code this wrong, there is a good possibility that you will have a light on or a communication issue or something like that. Now with this, if this is powered, it needs to be bolted down. Okay, and this is gonna be with most airbag modules. If they have power going to them, they do not need to be removed and turned upside down because they can be damaged because there's some rollover sensors in here that will deploy the airbag if the car rolls over. And so if you take this and flip it over and you got it plugged up, you can deploy the airbags in a vehicle. So be very careful when you're dealing with these. Normally when I'm removing or replacing these airbag modules, I will remove the battery cable, you know, the negative cable and uh, let the car power down before I go in here and mess with this. So these modules are normally, you know, you burn them to the car. A lot of times you can't reprogram them from another vehicle. So salvage units and things like that won't really be a possibility for this airbag module. Also, if the airbag module uh, deploys airbags, sometimes you will have to replace it as well. So if you have any airbag deployment on a lot of vehicles, you will have to replace the airbag module as well. That adds to expense of the vehicle uh, along with the airbags and whatever body damage the car has. So just keep that in mind. Uh, most of the time, there's plenty of information on how to code these. If you have the correct scan tool, you can do that yourself. Uh, I don't know of anybody that's selling these already coded, but uh, if you do, just leave me a, a, a message down there in the comments and I'll put it in the description of the video. With secondary straight systems, uh, we do have a couple of special tools in our in our arsenal that we can use that helps us kind of come to the conclusion of a part being wrong. Uh, and the one of the most important ones we can use is a airbag simulator. So this is the one that came with my machine. It's actually really nice. It's nicer than any airbag simulator that I've used. Uh, a lot of times you can get these off of Amazon, uh, eBay, very cheap, you know, 20 bucks or something like that. But basically it goes into the airbag connector and it acts as an airbag. And so a lot of people use these for aftermarket steering wheels that aren't equipped with airbags, or maybe they're going to racing seats or something and they have these emulators in there that are taking place of a factory airbag. And what that does is it keeps the uh, check airbag light off. Now that's not gonna provide any protection on the crash, but it does get the annoying light off of the dash. But what we can use these for is if we have an airbag that's giving us a problem, say I have a that curtain igniter that we were talking about uh, earlier on the tape, I can put one of these in line. I can unplug the airbag and put this in and I can see if the code will clear. If the code clears, that tells me a couple of things. First of all, that pretty much confirms that the airbag was the culprit and the problem. So we can go ahead and write it up for a bad airbag, but it also tests the entire circuit and the secondary restraint module for continuity and making sure that everything is okay because the module is recognizing that the airbag is there, it's reporting back and everything's good in the world. So this right here, it came with my machine. Again, I would just get a cheap one off of Amazon and, and put it into the connector. Be very careful with these connectors uh, when you're doing work like this because the connectors themselves are gold plated and they're pretty fragile for this type of system. So, and a lot of times, again, you can't get the connectors on some of these vehicles. You have to replace the whole wiring harness to the ABS, uh, excuse me, the airbag module if you damage it. So um, definitely these come in handy from time to time. Let me show you how to use this. Okay, so this is the switch I was flipping to set that code earlier, okay? And so if I had that code and it was giving me an airbag problem, so I'm gonna go ahead and flip this and that is going to give me that automatic, you know, dead set code right there. 
because it disconnects the airbag side of the circuit from the circuit, okay? So now, if I get my simulator here, the simulator, the one I have is pretty nice, but it, it's basically just a two ohm uh, resistor. And I'm just gonna grab, I don't know, two of the black wires. And I'm gonna put in right here. And we'll see, the code should be in the memory. So let's go to our scan tool here and see uh, more or less what it's giving us. So we're going to codes only. Come on. So open or increase resistance and the right side curtain airbag first inflator. So if, if this was a circuit problem, then this code would not erase okay so let's try to erase the code if the code erases and it comes back no codes present then we know that the airbag is the problem and not the circuit so we'll go back we're going to clear the codes and so the simulator is taking place of the airbag okay so let's go and read the codes again we should be no codes present okay so no codes present now if i take that simulator out here's a simulator here so i'm gonna take it out you'll see that the code will pop right back up okay now i guess i could go ahead and order an airbag and plug it up and hope that it works but that's using the parts cannon and here at auto scholar we don't use the parts cannon okay so these right here again it's a two ohm you can build your own you know just get you a two ohm uh, resistor and you can build your own or again they're on uh, they're really cheap I mean you know five to twenty dollars probably on Amazon and you can get your own okay so that wraps up our airbag diagnostic video and lesson for today if you have any questions please leave them in the comments uh, I probably won't be able to really answer questions about specific vehicles that you have but if you have just anything as far as theory of a vehicle and the airbag system i'm uh more than willing to answer any questions you have about that in the comments again uh this is one of the longer videos that i've done and it's more of a lesson for the professional technician and i'm planning to do more of these because i believe it's important for technicians to get a good low cost quality education to uh, make them better technicians and make them more money and fix more cars so if you like what you saw please like the video and of course subscribe to the channel so you can see you know more of this stuff that i'm doing so i'm also on facebook instagram twitter vk if you're in eastern europe you can look me up there under auto scholar with mr b i have a lot of resources there and share a lot of things that i can't share over youtube so check me out there and again thank you for watching this lesson we'll see you next time on auto scholar with mr b